That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? No place like home. Those wings call them fire? Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. I missed the part where that's my problem. Hey, Spider-Man. Hey, man. What's up, Mr. Stark? Spider-Man. Who am I? I'm Spider-Man. Hey, guys. Welcome back to my series of Spider-Man reviews leading up to Spider-Man No Way Home in about two weeks. It's becoming the end of November and the beginning of December. It is now recently the 28th of November. So very excited about that. And I can't wait to see Spider-Man No Way Home in two weeks. I can't wait. So, here we go. So, today I am reviewing Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The plot is, Team Miles Morales becomes a Spider-Man of his universe and must join other Spider-Man and women from other dimensions to stop Kingpin from destroying the multiverse. So, now, I saw this in the theatre when it came out and I saw it with my little cousin and I liked it, but Normally when I see Marvel movies, especially Spider-Man movies, I'm like, this is the greatest Spider-Man movie ever made until a new one comes out. And this is one that I was like, I liked it, but I don't know what, I don't know why, I don't know what's wrong with it. And honestly, I still don't. And even the notes that I've dropped down, I don't even know if they're actual reasons why I don't love this film. I like this film, but I don't love it like everyone else. When I think of Spider-Man, I think of live action. That's why I love the Tobey Maguire films, the Tom Holland films, and the Andrew Garfield films. That's why I love those, because the scope is so massive and you could do more with the visuals when it's in live action. This one, it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, okay, so this is what this is. But watching it this time, I was trying to find out what, why I didn't go, this is, the best movie I've ever seen. And why the... Okay. One of the complaints that I do have about this movie is that they don't set the Spider-Verse up at all. They just go like, okay, here's a Spider-Verse movie. Now hear me out. Um, one of the reasons why I'm so excited for No Way Home is because that they've been building a Spider-Verse since the original Sam Raimi trilogy that started in 2002. And then we're beginning so many since then, we're beginning the more sequels to the Sam Raimi movies. We'll be, we got two Amazing Spider-Mans, and then we got like, well, okay, we got three Tom Holland has appeared in as Spider-Man, but two as his movies. And now, No Way Home is his movie, but also spider -Ver, a Spider-Verse movie. So, which this is what I was trying to do. It was trying to make a Miles Morales movie while also making a Spider-Verse movie. Which, if they did, like, I know that they, we got hints of their origin, but they didn't do, like, okay, here's a Peter B. Parker movie. Here is a Peter Parker movie. Here's a Miles Morales movie. Here's a Spider-Gwen movie. Here's a Penny Parker movie. Here's a... Um, I don't know. Here's a spy noir movie, and here's a uh, here's a Peter Porker movie, but they're like, no, we'll just smash it all in together. That's why I love things like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and what I'm hoping is to love No Way Home because they have been building like the MCU has been building to Endgame. The, like, Spy, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man and the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, even though that they weren't planning it, they have suddenly been building to Spider-Man No Way Home. But this film hasn't done that. They just threw it out. 
And I saw so much hype around, like even Tom Holland, who's one of my favorite Spider-Man, was like, this is one of the best movies I've ever seen. And I'm like, okay. And this was, I think this was before I saw it because America normally gets these movies out before us. So, now I'm seeing all these reviews that's the best Spider-Man movie ever made. I'm like, so I probably have my bar really high. And I'm just like, oh, okay. It's entertaining. It's fun. But it's not the best Spider-Man movie for me. Um, and so... But they don't... They don't do that with this movie. They... But if we got um, movies before it with, like, okay, don't do a Miles movie. Just do everyone. Do, like, basically do, like, a going movie, a PB Piper movie, and so on. And do those. And then the Spider-Verse movie could just be this. Then we just know who the other Spider-Man are. And I think that is what, I think it would have been a bigger, like, a bigger, more exciting movie than Sony cramming stuff in. But it doesn't feel like that they're cramming stuff in. It just feels like that way. We don't feel the emotions for characters as we do for Miles, because Miles is the main focus of the movie. And, but what I will say, the final battle is earned. It's so cool. The whole bit of um, like the jokes in there are funny. Um, the whole thing of them teaming up to get rid of uh, Olivia Octavius and Kingpin and uh, Prowler and all these other villains is just so cool. And I have I have a theory. Right? So, if if you guys watch the movie again, watch it before No Way Home because it actually really helps. Because you might need to watch it before Morbius comes out because in the trailer, you know how it shows like the Oscorp building from uh, the Andrew Garfield movies there. It shows the Daily Bugle paper from the Sam Raimi movies and then they have like the... I don't know, and they have um, like all these references to the Amazing Spider-Man movies and the uh, Amazing Spider-Mans and the Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies. Well, here's something: the um, okay, this is part where they're in the final bell and buildings are coming out of the collider, and then going, going, guys. It looks like that our worlds are coming to us, and then they're kind of coming out of the portal and stuff like that. I think that is what's happening in Morbius. Right? Because you have all these different worlds in, this, in the one world. Because Sony thought it would be a good idea to merge all of their Spider-Man universes together. So, because if you've seen Venom... Uh, Venom 2, that is. They, which, go check out my review. They, spoiler alert, mentioned Spider-Man in the end credit scene. Which I mentioned in that review, so go check it out. That that has to be a tie-in for Venom to be in No Way Home. Not necessarily as a villain, but some sort of cameo or appearance or something. So, something has to happen with that. And then... Something is going on with No Way Home and Venom 2 that must lead into the whole uh, Sam Raimi uh, Sam Raimi world and the Andrew Garfield Michael Webb world merging together for the Morbius trailer. That's got to be that's got to be something that's going on. So. Yeah, so what would I rate this film? I would honestly give it a Spider-Man. The Sam Raimi movies, I have been giving them mainly a Spider-Man. Um, but they are the best Spider-Man movies to me. Um, even though I do love the Tom Holland uh, ones. Those are some of my favourite MCU movies.
uh, are the Tom Holland Spider-Man ones. Um, and the Andrew Garfield ones, I love those. Um, the first one I don't really like. You can go check out my review and see the reasons why I don't really like that one. But I do like it. I just don't love it. I love this more than the first Amazing Spider-Man. This one wasn't boring. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely give it a Spider-Man for sure. So guys, please, um, next time I am going to review Spider-Man Homecoming, going into the MCU now. So, it's starting to collide. So, let's go. I am going to obviously... After this, I'm going to record some Christmas stuff, Christmas reviews and stuff like that. And I am going to be hopefully posting my Venom review, uh, Let There Be Carnage anyway, and Spy vs. This one uh, simultaneously. So guys, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye. Hey there. Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon.